Hello, and welcome to Our Devotions, where together we're developing lives with God at the center. I'm Daniel, and this is my amazing wife, Amanda. Hello, we're talking today about are you leading or are you pointing? Starting off in the book of 1 Corinthians. So grab your Bible and get ready to jump right in with us. So this week I was listening to a book and it's been a great book so far by John Maxwell. And Sorry, just that. <laughs> thank you. Right. And as I was going through this book, I discovered, or I discovered, I listened, and he made a comment about leadership that is so true and throughout the Bible. In 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And there's a whole bunch of verses on this, this topic of, of setting this example. Yeah. But while John was talking about leadership, he said, you can't lead somebody somewhere that you're not. Mm. You can't lead somebody somewhere that you haven't. He goes, yeah. that's called pointing. <laughs> when you're like, Such a simple but profound thing. To yeah. Think of. yeah. He's like, are you leading or are you pointing? Saying, hey, you should go over there. You should do that. Or you're saying, yeah. hey, come with me. Like, yeah. And I, as I was pondering this, I was like, all right, so this is true. And it, this is this is biblical leadership. I mean, he, Paul says it here, but in Numbers 27, there's this address of leadership. It says, "Let the Lord, let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, appoint a man over the congregation, who shall go out before them and come in before them, who shall lead them out and bring them in." And just looking at, all right, if we're going to make a leader, we want somebody who's going to do what everyone else should be doing. Yeah, that should set this example that we can follow. In Philippians, Paul talks about it in uh, a couple times in Philippians, a few times throughout Corinthians. It just keeps coming up. But Jesus addresses the opposite. And he calls out the Pharisees and he goes, do what they say, not what they do. These guys are not practicing what they preach. Mm -hmm. And I, I hear that and I'm like, okay, this is sad. Jesus calls them out. It sets yeah. this example and says leadership should be setting this example. Yeah. And I, as I started pondering this, I thought, well, what, where do I want to lead? What is it that I want the church to be full of? Like if, if I was to sit with you and say, hey, describe a perfect church. Like what would mark the perfect church? Yeah. What would mark a healthy follower of Jesus? And you may sit here and go, well, the, the perfect church would be full of prayer. The perfect church would be full of forgiveness. The perfect church would be um, full of passion. The perfect church, and I mean, you can just like yeah. list off all these things. You'd say, hey, an on fire believer would look like someone who you know, reads their Bible. Does, and you could just like make yeah. this list. And I look so often as we go to lead our children, and you're like, what is it that you think the children should look like? Yeah. Um, uh, like, not just physically, but you know, what character, what integrity, yep. what, all of these things. And then asking, going, I am I leading it there? Yeah. And if, if I'm pointing and saying, hey, the church should be marked by this, am I that? Yeah. Or am I just pointing, saying, hey, the church, you should be this and you should be that. And, right. Or am I, am I leading there? And I, I was thinking, I was challenged because we have kids. <laughs> and kids are a blessing from the Lord but they will reveal things about you. <laughs> um, and they will follow your example, but possibly not the example that you wanted them to follow. Right. Like you do something great and they may not notice and then, the, then they do something and you're like, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, what you do. You like, do. I don't do that. And five minutes later, I'm like, oh, I do. Yeah, what you do, <laughs> what you, you say, say. How do you say it? They have called us out on areas that we have uh, not practiced what we preach. Like, <laughs> sit there and like, you know what? Hey, kids, you can't be on a screen all day. Like, you, like yeah. And they're like, what are you doing on your phone? And you're like, you know what? That's too much time on my phone. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for calling me out. But, but it's important. And I just started looking and started thinking about this. I started looking and going, all right, hey, I want to challenge all of us to, to look at our lives and go, hey, where do I want to lead my family? Where do I want to lead as a believer? Yeah. And go and examine our life and go, is it me pointing or am I there? And not to be critical, not to be judgmental, but to look and go, oh, 
if there's areas that I'm like, the church should be and believers should be and my children should be, but I'm not, then I know where I need to work on it. Yeah. Then I need to go, okay, hey, if, if a healthy, you know, they, they should eat healthy and not just eat junk food, then I need to examine my diet. Right. If, you know, they, they, they need to be spending time with God daily, am I? Yeah. And like, just ask yourself those questions and then begin to work on them so yeah. that we can lead people to Jesus. And I love that Paul makes this comment over and over about join in imitating me. And, and he goes through and, and then put these into practice. Like he, and he says it over and over that he's going to follow God and then we get to follow. And I want to follow God so that my family can follow, so that the church can follow, so that non-believers can see something different yeah. in me and want to follow. Yeah, so good. Yeah, I just love the idea of not feeling condemnation, like, oh, no, I messed up, so nobody should follow me. <laughs> or no one, you should all, like, not, don't imitate what I do. But thinking that's an opportunity to ha show people how to change. You know, mm -hmm. like, as a parent, when I mess up, I don't try to hide it, be like, oh, kids, don't see that I messed up. I, I'm honest, and I say, guys, I'm sorry. What I did was wrong. I shouldn't have yelled. I shouldn't have been so on my phone at the kitchen table. Like, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Show them what does it look like to do something wrong and to make changes that don't bring condemnation, but that bring conviction and change. Yeah. It's okay to repent and say, oh, I did it wrong. I'm going to do better next time. And when other people in our lives see that modeled well, it doesn't matter if they're even kids, anybody else, and they can see that it's common to make mistakes and it's also common to overcome them yeah. and to do better next time. That brings so much freedom and so much light. It does. It is so powerful to set the example, not just it, of perfection, right. but of, all right, when you find areas that need work, what do you do? Yeah. It's so good. All right, well, let's get into our confessions. All right. Repeat these out loud after me. I cast my cares on God. I cast my cares on God. Because he cares for me. Because he cares for me. I choose prayer. I choose prayer. Instead of fear. Instead of fear. I bring my request with thanksgiving. I bring my request with thanksgiving. I don't have a spirit of fear. I don't have a spirit of fear. But of power, love, and a sound mind. But of power, love, and a sound mind. The same power. The same power. That raised Christ from the dead. That raised Christ from the dead. Lives in me. Lives in me. I am more than a conqueror through him. I am more than a conqueror through him. God is my healer. God is my healer. And redeemer. And redeemer. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I resist the devil. I resist the devil. And he flees from me. And he flees from me. My prayers are powerful. My prayers are powerful and effective and effective god we thank you that we can have powerful and effective prayers god that we could know you that we could follow after you that we could reflect you to the world to our families god i i ask that in the areas that we fall short that you would reveal them to us with your love and your grace that you would mold us into your image more and more God, that we could be a good example to those around us. Yes. We ask that you would have your way, that you, we would see your word confirmed with signs and wonders, yeah. that we would see those around us healed and made whole. And we thank you for working in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We hope that this encouraged you today. If it did, please hit like, share, subscribe. All of those things help the algorithms to know to send it out to others as well. Our invitation to you is to get into the Word for yourself and discover how much God has for you. Be blessed. We'll see you again soon.